thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Phil Picorni. I'm the uh, HPC um, project uh, representative for the incubation committee. And uh, thank you for coming for this presentation from uh, we went about uh, yeah. there, Dr. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm Jackie Hong from Women Surge Firm Team. Yeah, today I would like to provide, to introduce the, uh, our product, uh, Datano Gen2. Yeah, it's a high performance scalability uh, machine learning platform with the latest PCI Switch Gen4 technology. Yeah, today actually is the first time at OCP. So I'm so excited and kind of nervous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Before briefing, um, I want to talk about uh, what are the demands for the AI platform. Yeah, there are more and more um, AI application uh, in today's world, especially for the high performance computing and the machine learning and deep learning. So, so what's the uh, uh, AI platform we need? So how to improve our uh, system uh, performance and have the high scalability for more uh, flexible for uh, data center deployment? and uh, have the uh, encryption management for system monitoring and the control. And also have the uh, modularized design for easy maintenance. Yeah, today we have uh, focused on the four topics. Performance, scalability, and uh, measurability and modularity. modularity. Okay, there are some requirements need to fulfill uh, for the AI platform to have the uh, high performance computing. So the first thing should be the high, high bandwidth with the uh, BCI Gen4 switch. Uh, it's up to the 16 giga transition per second and um, Second is the support the high density um, of the uh, PCI computer accelerators. Okay, like the support the uh, 16 PCI computer accelerator. Okay, and also have the support the high scalability, and uh, for it's up to the support the fourth host server connect to the, each of the uh, um, switch and connect to the SS4 uh, GPGPU. And also have the modularity uh, design support for the AI platform. So, and uh, if one system have a better probes per watt, especially for the 16, uh, PCI computer accelerator cards in the chassis. We need to consider the high temperature of the uh, computer accelerators. So it should in need uh, the superior cooling design because of the, uh, if the, it's over the temperature, it will impact the, the GPU performance. So, and also have the, uh, in culture management, based on the IPMI and the Redfish by the BMC to monitor the system health and the control the fan, and to have the to reach the high performance. Okay, here is the data on Gen two uh, architecture. So there are two drawers. Each drawer has to support uh, two PCI switch and uh, eight GPU GPU cards, maybe the GPU GPU card and the FPGA, or the NMP neural error processor. So 
from the host, uh, it can support up to four host servers connected to the, so it can each access the four uh, GPU. Okay, and uh, each drawer can be removable for easy maintenance. Okay, this is our uh, JBug skill. We have another optional skill with the uh, integrated server inside. Later, I will uh, describe more detail in, in, in the uh, later slide. Okay. This is our uh, chassis system line. Its dimension is uh, 900 millimeters length, and the width is the 488 millimeter, and the, the, the height is the 175 millimeter. So you can see each drawer have the, the support uh, uh, eight G GPU cards inside and the two switch. And uh, the, the at the front side area, SS, uh, you should be have the already have the LED board and uh, two plus one uh, redundant power supply. It also can be removed for modularized. And the, at the rear size, we have the I/O module board. It connect to the uh, up uh, to the host server through the, the mini SAS HD cable. Okay, we have the four fan modules. Each fan module has dual rotor, and then we support the one rotor fail in the chassis. So if the high density in the chassis, the high temperature, should, we need to consider to how to, um, how to have the better superior cooling design to counter this, uh, this uh, cover the high temperature and the won't impact the performance. So we design a duct. It is separate the cool eye for the second row GPU and the hard air from the first row. The seal gap between the GPU prevent the air from bypassing. Okay. So you can see the second row we have leave the, the GPU row about the, uh, 38. 38 millimeter. It's bypassed hot air from the first row GPU outlet, and the make cool air easier to the second to the enter the second row GPU. So you can see, this is the cool air bypass, yeah, and the, the hot air through the down down door. So the airflow improves. With the duck and without duck, you can see you have the huge improvement, and the power can be saved about uh, 240 watt. Yeah. So if one system have the high performance, we think uh, it should have the, with the latest uh, the PCI Gen 4 switch, yeah. and uh, it. Our data node Gen2 is the 4U discredited computer accelerator and support up to the 16 PCIe uh, GPGPU or FPGA or neural network, maybe SSD flash car yeah, inside and can support the high scalability for up to the four host server. And we have support the superior cooling deny, just as I mentioned and the BMC encoding management based on the IPMI refresh. Um, later I will describe this in more detail. So we have a module, modularized baseboard design for each drawer. So each drawer has the two lens, two 19.6 lens PCI switch. Okay, it support the um, 
a computer accelerator. So this two drawer has the GPU GPU inside, so this is a JBAR skew. We have another skew, it's a replace the, G, the GPU cards as the server, server board. We use the, you can insert a, a Tiago pass and one or two Tiago pass. But if we support the two Tiago pass, some uh, mechanical deny riser car, fan cage, and uh, some, some mechanical deny need to be modified. This is also our product outcome set. But if the support the one server, Tiago pass should be fine. Okay. And for scalability, we support up to the four external host server and for each connect to the each switch. And each server can, can manage the four GPU GPU cards. And we have another skill have the support the one integrated server and in the drawer. And we have support the two uh, system integrated uh, server inside. So we have the uh, three skill, it depends on customer's uh, requirement. So there are many, many AI applications like the HPC high performance computing, that the scientific computing or financial service, or have the uh, application for the deep learning or machine learning should be the image processing and the data analysis and the inference. So this is the common use case for the high performance computing. This is CPU and the GPU ratio. It should, we, we can support the eight CPU with uh, the 16 GP GPU cars. So and up to the host server. The bandwidth should be the two by 16. Yeah. And this is another use case for the deep learning and machine learning. Yeah. It's uh, the CPU and the GPU GPU ratio should be the uh, two CPU. Once one use case is one, two CPU with the 16 GPU GPU and the, another case should be uh, four CPU with the 16 GPU GPUs for deep learning and machine learning. Okay, this is the, uh, for the BMC for the enclosure management. And uh, the interface should be IPMA and the Redfish. We have the, go through the uh, in network. And the uh, BMC can access the device through the, the I2C to monitor the GPU temperature and the system health, like the voltage current. So it can report to the host and then control the fan depends on the uh, fan curve thin line. Okay, and the, and the LED and the power, power. So BMC can monitor the system health to have the, the cause the system have the better performance. And uh, another feature is that our BMC can auto conversion. It will check the skew conversion according to the host connection. Then BNC will reconfigure the PCI conversion based on our system skew. Okay, so it's, it's more flexible for the user. Okay, next uh, we'll, uh, Eckberg will introduce the Broadcom PCI Gen 4 switch Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Akbar Kazmi, and I'm product line manager for PCI Express switches at Broadcom, which uh, is basically uh, the company that purchased PLX technology that has been in PCI Express business for a long time. And we have had a um, lot of switches that we introduced to the market. Uh, so I'm going to talk about this PCI Express Gen 4 switch. Now, um, in, in Silicon Valley, people own a lot of uh, uh, power cars, muscle cars. 
so I would take the, or use the analogy of these uh, GPUs and accelerators and other um, high speed, high performance components that are being built or that are already there as those performance cars. And just imagine you had a performance car but didn't have high octane gas. What would you do? You leave your car in the garage and wait for the gasoline that can run it. So now PCIe Gen 4 is that gasoline that's going to run or connect these high performance compute engines, high performance machines. And we are the first one, uh, and we have been historically the first one to introduce new technology in terms of PCIe connectivity since 2003. So this is our first PCIe Gen 4 switch. It's here now, and kudos to our Weaven team. We had first silicon come to us in February. We shipped it to them. They shipped the silicon to their uh, assembly partner. They had the boards ready. The boards could not be built because it was Chinese New Year holidays in, uh, in that part of the world. Uh, so the board actually got built after Chinese New Year, which is like late February. They got these boards back late February, early March, and they had to test them uh, and create a demo and show it to you. Now, the things work so flawlessly because of the PCIe Express technology maturity and the products that we provided in terms of stability and maturity. So within a day, they were able to get the system going, running at Gen 4. Uh, so, so great team who put the hardware together, and of course, great team that put the silicon together. Uh, and, and the reason we are able to provide these products is that we have proven technology in terms of CERDES, proven technology in terms of switch connectivity, and proven technology in terms of process and flow and so on and so forth. Uh, so we um, have our own IP uh, for CERDES, and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. The PCI Gen 4 switches that we are sampling now, and you see one system, there's another system that has been shown on the floor, and there are at least a dozen designs that are in the play and these designs will be released when Gen 4 GPUs from GPU companies and, and CPU companies become available next year. Uh, we have uh, six di different derivatives. The largest one is 96 lanes, and the smallest one is 24 lane. And in, besides uh, standard PCIe connectivity, uh, these switches offer other valuable features that we have embedded in the silicon. One of them happens to be uh, a DMA uh, engine. And this DMA engine has multiple functions where you can actually have up to 48 different data flows moving back and forth between one port and the other port. And they could be moving data from CPU to CPU, GPU to GPU, or CPU to IO. So it's basically anywhere to anywhere data move using the internally built DMA engine that relieves the main processor or GPU from the task of moving data because the GPU and CPUs could be doing the, the crunching of the numbers and doing the, the collection of the numbers and analysis. So, so we took the task to put some DMA engines so that the data move could be offloaded to our product. We also have capabilities where you can share um, I.O. products or I.O. functions uh, among multiple host devices, multiple root devices, which is not a typical PCIe offering. So we, this is, again, the value add that we provided. And then we have an embedded CPU that actually allows you to utilize these capabilities because a standard PCIe tree structure doesn't allow to do that. So we had to stay compatible with PCIe Gen 4 at the same time, offer a lot of value that could be explored and exploited using the embedded CPU and also an external CPU. Now, let me go back to the uh, same analogy of the car. So let's say you had this muscle car. I love Ferraris, okay? Uh, and, um, and you have the gas, but you don't have the road to drive it. Let's say somebody says, hey, go drive it on a mountain road or a dirt road. Of course, you will not take your car out. So you have to have the right road built. So Broadcom is known to provide uh, world-class 
best thirties uh, in the world, basically. In Broadcom, we have three big divisions coming from classic Broadcom, uh, coming from LSI Logic, and classic Avago. They're all combined now. And these thirties that we use uh, are, have been tested multiple times in multiple test chips. So those who have battle scars from PCIe Gen 3 days with PCIe Gen 3 SI was a major issue, worry no more. We were able to get our silicon on the system and get it rolling in 10, 20 minutes. Uh, it's, just, it's just so good. This connects very well. And in terms of robustness of, this, of the SERDIs that you need to connect these devices and subsystem together um, has been proven at PCI SIG. We have taken these test chips to PCI SIG multiple times and, and have done testing, so they are compliant. Uh, although PCI SIG is not officially certifying yet because they're not ready, uh, but the product has been tested with the PCIe uh, suite. And we have also used the same CERDIs in other products at Broadcom that have been uh, utilized in multiple different applications. Uh, so, so we are beyond what PCI SIG is looking for. We can handle roughly 28 dB of loss from ball to ball in, in our device. In addition to having these CERDIs capabilities, can, can somebody close the door, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, in addition to having this fine capabilities, you also need, when you're bringing up a new system uh, and, and debugging it, uh, you need a lot of capabilities where you can go inside the device and figure out what's going on, because you always have problems with this thing. These guys designed a perfect system which didn't have a problem, but people anticipate problems. So there are capabilities where you can look at the eye of the, of the receiver. There are capabilities where you can uh, do the, the package generation and see how the system reacts. Uh, you inject errors in the system. You, uh, you loop back your signal and see how uh, things are working uh, on your board and all that stuff. So these capabilities have been tested, validated, uh, uh, very nice GUI interfaces. These are available historically from, from PCIe products, from PLX and Broadcom, which are also available to customers to, uh, to utilize. Now, PCIe, as many of you know, is a single host, tree topology type structure, but based on the capabilities that we have embedded inside the switch, and the capabilities that you can explore using an external management CPU if you need more bandwidth in terms of management, you can create a composable architecture where you have multiple host or root ports or servers. They can connect to the PCIe switch complex and then on the other side of the PCIe switch complex you would have FPGAs, you will have GPUs, you will have some accelerators, you have SOCs. All those could be dynamically assigned to the application that want to utilize that capability. And, and this is done today, and moving forward you will see people will have these capabilities available in the cloud where you can move applications or move resources from application to application in, in microseconds. Uh, you will see gaming getting uh, more traction uh, in the cloud, and you'll see other machine learning and, and AI application utilizing this particular concept. So in summary, uh, Broadcom PCI Express Gen 4 switch is here, and uh, PCI Gen 4 products will start coming out. You saw one product on the floor. Uh, uh, during this show, you will see more products coming out down the road, uh, mostly in 2019 timeframe when we hit the production of PC Express switches. And just want to remind you that we have the best and most robust studies available in the market. They're enhanced features that go beyond PC Express standard connectivity of one host to a bunch of I.O. devices. And we have a great history of delivering products that are out there in the field for the last 15 years, and, and, and our products are available or being deployed or have been deployed in pretty much all data centers, 
all cloud systems, all ODMs, all OEMs use our switches today, the existing families, and we expect that they will adopt that down the road in PCIe Gen 4 as well. Uh, now this composable architecture that we talked about requires some software development. We will provide basic building blocks of the software modules, some drivers, and we expect our industry partners to come along and use those uh, drivers and capabilities through APIs to build the composable system that I uh, uh, discussed earlier. That's all I have for it. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to uh, answer. Can you go to the microphone, please? We typically don't talk about pricing in, on show floors, but if you have an interest, please um, give me a call or talk uh, after the show or after the presentation. We'd be happy to um, give you the right contact. Anybody else? Sure. So looking forward at 56 gig, uh, do you guys think they'll need read timers or not? Or some signal conditioning stuff? So we are not doing read timers. No, I'm talking about the, the, the system level. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, let's, let's. So basically your, your slide, right, was sharing that your SIRDES is so good that you, know, you, you can connect directly at 28 gigs. I'm just saying the next generation, 56 gig of the system, oh, level, oh, will oh. we be able to connect directly or okay. we'll need some sort of signal conditioning in between? No, so I didn't say it runs at 28 gig. It says it can handle 28 dB of loss. It runs at PCIe Gen 4, 16 gig. Yeah. Last call, any more questions, please? Custom TLP. We, uh, so our embedded processor actually can, can create a, s a different routing capability other than PCI SIG routing. So we have this concept of global ID. So as soon as a packet comes in, we create a global ID and route it through multiple switch complexes. So yes, we can do that. All right, I guess the next, out of time? All right, yeah. okay, thank you. Thanks everybody.